In this video, we're exploring the Scott Rayo recipe of the Tricolip Brewer. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we are revisiting a brewer that we've used in the past, uh, the Tricolid. And we're going to tell you more about why, uh, we're going to tell you more about how, but we're going to start brewing because this is kind of a long recipe. So when we first started to use it, which you can see in our old video, we weren't really able to make it work for us. We couldn't make a cup of coffee that we actually liked. But what we're doing in this video is for the first time ever, we are testing the Scott Rayo recipe at this. Um, he is um, someone that's been supporting this brewer for a long time. Uh, we know a lot of people have done it. We kind of want to try to understand what the, what the fuss is about and if we can take one of our coffees and actually make a tasty cup of coffee with it. So we're going to follow his recipe to the T, basically. We're going to walk you through it. We're also going to display it in our comments and so on, right? So first of all, the coffee. We're using a washed, processed Maracatura variety from the El Socorro farm in Guatemala. Very peachy, very storm fruity, very chocolatey. Admittedly, this would be a lot lighter roasted than what, for example, Scott most likely would use when he's brewing. And we do believe that roast degree has a big impact um, on the brewing, but we're trying to have all of the other variables more or less the same. So for the grinding, he is basically pitching that he wants a medium to fine grind size. Unfortunately, he's not referencing any microns, so we can't say exactly what that is. Our kind of interpretation of that is a micron of 510 uh, grinded coffee on the didding standing behind me. Now, we're dosing 20 grams, as the recipe suggests. We've already rinsed the paper filter, so we're putting the coffee in. One of the things he says in the recipe is that he, one, wants us to level out the bed, which we're doing. Two, uh, a part of the recipe, you're gonna wait until the water level is basically one centimeter above the coffee bed to do an initial pour. So uh, we're gonna try to measure that out for you guys and for ourselves. So we're assuming it's about here. So we're just gonna use that mark for reference when we're brewing just to be as accurate as we possibly can. Now, water-wise, what we're doing is we're using our store water. Um, we're boiling it up to 100 degrees on the fellow. We're not using the restricted flow. We're using a much faster flow because that's also one of the things that we've been recommended here. Uh, we're putting the funnel on top, zeroing down the grinder. And then we're gonna start with our initial pour, uh, which should take 30 seconds. And we should pour a total of 60 grams. So that's quite a lot slower than what we're used to. 60 grams here. Then we want a gentle stir to even out the coffee bed. We assume gentle is something like this. Then we're gonna wait up to one minute and we're gonna pour 170 grams of water. So I'm actually gonna sear it down the grinder just to make this even more accurately, basically. And one of the things that are really interesting with this recipe here and quite different from um, also how we first try to use it is that the brewing time here is quite long. So the reference range here is between seven to 10 minutes of total brew time, which we think is kind of interesting. But first of all, here, the second pour, we're pouring 170 grams of water. Here we go, and we're gonna add an other gentle stir to it. Again, to even out the coffee bed is the reference. Uh, I can see when I'm stirring here, uh, or spinning it, not stirring it, that it actually doesn't do much with the coffee bed. So I'm a little bit confused here, but maybe someone can clarify this a little bit more. Uh, so we're tearing down the scale once more, 
And at this point, what we want to do, and this should happen in between three to six minutes, is that the coffee bed or the water in here is going to go down to the mark that we've done that should then be one centimeter um, above the coffee bed. So that's basically what we're going to be waiting for now. Now, one of the challenges that we had in the past working with the tricolate was that we used more traditional brewing ratios which caused the strength of the cup to be quite high. So we had this quite high extractions, but with very high TDSs. Needless to say, that wasn't necessarily uh, what we believe to be a very tasty cup of coffee. Um, so that's why we were very curious to kind of try this recipe as well, right? Um, there's a few other things to maybe considering here. Uh, again, um, Pouring, don't use um, a flow restricted kettle. Use something you can pour a little bit faster with. Uh, you should always use a screen head, which is basically what we've been doing here. Um, so I say everything is pretty much straightforward. Now, um, I guess the reason why we're using as high as possible temperature water is because one, the chamber is quite big. Um, two, the brew time is very long. So I guess we're running the risk of actually having too low temperature when we're brewing. Uh, now we're over three minutes. We are still not at the mark, but that's fine, because that should be anywhere between three to six minutes. So we're just basically gonna, we're gonna wait and see what happens. So we waited for the, the brewing water to go down to the mark, one centimeter above the coffee bed. We poured the remaining amount uh, of water and then we did, uh, as referenced in the recipe, a very aggressive stir. Now, uh, we noticed when we did this very aggressive stir, and that is basically, I was afraid to go more aggressive because then the liquid might actually go up through the brewer, so we were quite aggressive. But we could still clearly see that there is a lot of coffee that isn't moving, um, which we had a similar thing with our initial Yentl stirs. Sorry, spins, not stirs. Um, spin is basically taking the brewer, moving it, right? We're actually not stirring with anything on the inside, which is kind of interesting. So uh, we're curious to know if there's a technique here uh, to spinning that actually makes sure that all of that coffee is moving in the same way because visually it's quite clear that it doesn't. However, in the end of the day, it has to be tasty. That's the main thing. So if it is delicious, please don't take that as a critique, just as a, a visual reference that is pretty clear. Now we're above seven minutes. We're about seven and a half minutes. Uh, you still see we have um, quite a lot of brewing liquid in the brewer. We're actually down at the one centimeter mark again. Uh, and we're gonna just wait for this to go down. And I assume that if we can't do this within 10 minutes, we're probably grinding too fine uh, or having a coffee that is much lighter roasted than what the reference recipe has, right? Uh, which is also something to take into consideration. So processing, um, roast degree and so on, all has an impact on flow rate as well, right? Which we all know by now. So that's definitely something to factor in. But we're gonna wait for this to brew down and we're gonna do some measurements, do some tasting, and then we're gonna come back to you with the results. We're back and we have some results for you. Um, and we kind of want to, we want to talk about them. We are going to talk about them. But at the same time, I'm going to kickstart a second brew with a bunch of new variables because there are some lessons here that I think we can do a lot better. Now, first of all, to reference. So the first brew that we had gave us a total brew time of 10 minutes. So right on the kind of end of the suggested spectrum of brew time. It also gave us a TDS of 1.41 which I would assume is very acceptable giving the uh, recipe and also generates this very high extraction. Now, taste-wise, it becomes really sweet, um, which we like. Uh, Body-wise, tactility-wise, complexity-wise, not so much. We don't have the clarity that we're looking for, um, and we have this kind of almost artificial sugary vibe to the coffee, which is also not really going hand in hand to the taste preference that we really like. However, we had some observations. We think we can do this a little bit better. I am gonna say on record that that was the tastiest 10 minute brew that I ever had in my life. Doesn't necessarily mean it's very tasty, but in terms of long extraction times, this was a better version than the one I had in the past. The question here still is, 
why spend 10 minutes on brewing a cup of coffee when I can get a much better result in, let's say, two to three minutes using another brewer. Uh, but that's a discussion for another time and for Patreon. Now, we're gonna do this again. We changed a few variables. One big one is that we changed the coffee. Now, we didn't change the coffee because we don't like the coffee. We changed the coffee because we wanted a roast profile that was maybe a little bit more closer to what Scott would do. So we choose our SP line of coffee. This is our SP Kenya, and the AB sorting from the Kainumi factory. It's just darker roasted than what the filter coffee would be. Still not a dark roast or maybe as dark as Scott would roast, uh, but it's in our world, a heavier roasted coffee, right? So we thought that would be a little bit more suitable. We have the same grind size. Uh, we're gonna move away from spinning uh, the chocolate because it clearly doesn't work. The recipe reference spin it and all of the coffee will be evenly saturated, but it's very clear that it doesn't work. So we're gonna move from spinning to stirring, uh, which is gonna be interesting to try. And other observation is in the very later part of the brew, it says stir aggressively or spin aggressively to create an even coffee bed. Now it doesn't create an even coffee bed. In fact, it creates kind of a big little coffee tower, which is not necessarily what we're looking for here. So again, we think stirring might be a better option than for example, spinning. Uh, apart from that, we're keeping the water the same. So basically pushing 100 degrees or up boiling, pouring fast. We're dosing 20 grams of coffee and we're keeping the exact same pouring structure as we did before. Now, obviously this means we're gonna have to let the water go through the funnel. We're gonna have to lift it up, give it a quick stir, and then remove, and actually put it back on, right? And then we're searing the scale in between each pour, again, just to make sure that it's as even as possible. And we're letting this sit for, well, yeah, up to one minute, and then we're gonna do our second pour. We know this will take a little bit of time, so we're gonna get right back to you after this brew is done with the final conclusion. We're back for the last time in this video. Um, as we said, we pushed a second recipe. We've been tasting that, we've been measuring that. It's a coffee that is darker roasted from the one we had before. Naturally, it's also different coffee, right? It's a Kenyan coffee versus a Guatemalan coffee. Might have a little bit of a difference, but we believe that the biggest difference here is the roast degree um, above anything else, right? So what it comes down to here is that we have a total brew time that is just below 10 minutes. Obviously, stirring is way better than spinning from a visual perspective, right? So in terms of generating a flatbed, in terms of controlling that all of that coffee actually is saturated, spinning makes that very difficult. We would recommend to actually stir, even though that's not according to the recipe. Now, um, so the TDS we had on this final brew is just below 1.5 or around 1.48 which is giving us a very high extraction, much, much higher than we're ever um, used to doing here at April, which is interesting, right? And do we love this cup of coffee? No, we don't. Do we hate this cup of coffee? No, we don't. Um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, we're far from getting this recipe perfect, and there's definitely a lot of tweaking to do. I think for us, what it comes down to is to see what or how does this brewer perform in TDS ranges that we actually prefer drinking. So close it down to 1.25 to 1.3. So that's what we're gonna do after this video, right? Now we're spending way too much time on it. We've already done two videos. We're still kind of struggling to find the best version of this brewer and the best recipe and a recipe suitable for our coffees. Uh, we think it's fun in theory, it, it makes sense, um, but it's also, what we keep on coming back to is, if I am to invest this much time in a coffee, I want this to be considerably better than anything else I've ever had. And we're quite far away from that, right? So right now we're putting in a lot of effort, a lot of work. And 
in terms of what we're getting out taste wise, it's not necessarily representing it, right? That being said, it's a fun device. Uh, we would love for, for Scott to maybe give us some microns in terms of, of grind size. Obviously, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but we can, for example, show the spread of grinds that we have and the, again, the total micron. And then also maybe communicate a reference TDS, which would be super helpful, uh, even though we know refractometers can be a quite difficult uh, thing to work with in, in terms of consistency, but at least a ballpark, right? Um, that being said, it's, it's been fun to kind of revisit it. Again, we would love to hear your opinions and your thoughts on it. We're kind of struggling with it, um, but we assume that some of you are really happy with it, right? So maybe tell us what it is that you like so much. Now we're gonna take this conversation, put it over to Patreon, and we are, we're, let's, say, let's put it like this. We're coming back with another video if we at some point can find a tasty version of this brewer. So if we can make a recipe that we find is really delicious, we'll be back with another video at some point, um, perhaps later this year. If we don't, you're probably not gonna see it on this channel again. Uh, with that, we want to thank you all for watching. This was a long one, uh, but hopefully it's been an interesting one. Have a good day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see. Uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.